being someone that's on my first year. <laughs> um, being that I've, I've used meal plans for uh, countless years here, four years ago, it's not countless, it seems countless, <laughs> it seems countless, um, but uh, uh, having meal plans every year and having the core plan every year, um, I, I love meal plans. I, I don't like the way that every year um, we, at the end of the year, when it's time to, uh, to, to wrap everything up, people have 30, 40 meal plans left. Um, that's a shame. Now, however, you do have to realize when Dining Services does sell those, um, it, it is in a, in a, they're, they need to make sure that they make money um, in order to run Dining Services. Um, the meal plan system, what now one of my favorite things lately is the fact that you can redeem meal plans for a certain price uh, at certain things like the C store in the Commons. Um, I think that's a very effective step, and I think that's something that, that helps students get their maximum value out of their meal plans. Um, but I think, uh, I think the way that meal plans are working right now, uh, the only problem is, is finding a way to better uh, deal with the excess that students have at the end of the year, whether that's a sell-back program uh, or, or something to that effect. I would be something we'd have to sit down and talk about. Um, but like I said, there is a reason that, that, that we have a certain amount of meal plans because it is something that the dining services can't necessarily lose money on. Um, so I don't know if the sell-back program is the best way to go, but um, we wouldn't even look at that. We've had the wonderful privilege of getting to work with Nadine Siddiqui as he came in to be the head of Dining Services this year. He came from Stanford. He's brought a lot of amazing qualities to our program already at expanding it, but also trying to meet students' needs. And on top of all of that, he took up the banner of seeking out student opinion to make all different choices that affect it. One of his ways of doing so is with the idea of Dining Dollars. It's a program in which Jake Bathman himself uh, is one of the few users of it currently at testing it out, but it's almost a hybrid between meal plans and Aggie Bucks in a sort of way, and it allows students to not have to use so much money to fund all of their, their meal plan services that, that so many of us, including myself, don't even purchase anymore because of the hassle. But the interesting thing about dining services is, is it's mandated that it must operate as a non-profit program. So for it to fund its expansion and a better ability to serve students, it has to have money up front. That's where we get the idea of meal plans, that's the reason we have them. So Nadine Siddiqui has decided to work on this idea of dining dollars to where it helps students, but it also builds their ability to put input as it can. Above anything else, uh, this president has to have an ability to have a love for the unique culture that Texas a and has. Dr. Gates had a wonderful ability at embracing that culture and also at, at making us get outside of ourselves to present that culture to the United States and the world as a whole. But on top of a great love and passion for this place or a potential for a great love for this place, this president has to be willing to work with students and seek out student opinion. That is vital. Dr. Gates' initiative of shared governance was an amazing task and it gave us a louder voice than we could have had at most any other university. So the next president has to be willing to listen to student opinion. Along with that, I believe that with Dr. Gates being such an agent of change, as he titled himself, I think that it's necessary that this next president be able to take his initiatives that he set in motion and take Vision 2020, which was set in before him, and continue on this course. To not necessarily force so many great changes, but to solidify these amazing changes that have already begun to take place. I concur with most of that. I do believe that Dr. Gates, when he came in and began all these initiatives, um, he was sort of a celebrity. He put us on a national stage. Um, it was a huge deal that such a high, uh, high-profile individual had come to Texas A&M and was, and was now our president. Um, likewise, when he left, he made just as much news. Um, we don't necessarily need another huge celebrity name to come into Texas A&M. We've been put on the national stage. We've been, uh, these programs have been started. The age of change has begun. Um, and and what, needs to be, what needs to continue are these motions. We have to get someone to continue the momentum that we're cruising with. Um, we need to have someone that has a passion for this school and that has a passion for what Dr. Gates believed in as well. The Texas a and isn't just an educational factor, that it has a soul. Um, we need someone that understands um, the, the way that, that academics and character building can mesh together into a classroom. Um, someone that understands that when they're going to hire faculty, um, they need to focus on not just the research uh, and the, the academic um, cred uh, credentials of an individual, but also how well they can teach in a classroom, um, how well they can mesh with students, and how well they can teach students that leave Texas A&M how to be leaders of the United States and of the world, um, because that's what we need to be con concentrating on, um, is someone that can do just that and maintain the momentum that we've got going around. Important imperatives that, that, is, that is being worked on right now um, is the, the 
character building imperative, um, the imperative 13 that Nick Todd has already begun uh, working on. Uh, I think that is, is a great symbol of, of, of what Texas A&M believes in. I think the, the future of our university relies on um, that imperative being implemented, and I think it's something that I want to work towards uh, as far as in the future. Is that I see as vitally important for, and Envision 2020 are most important. I think one of them, um, in a somewhat biased way, is the improvement of the undergraduate experience. I think that, that the undergraduate experience has to grow, and, and things like the Marana Report that came out in the fall uh, are going to be helpful to that, and continuing us on in our expansion. Um, personally, I'm a, a big um, excited, or I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the improvements to diversity that are throughout Vision 2020. I'm excited about the opportunity for AM to have a more beautiful landscape that led to the creation of our, um, of our, um, I guess just to remind you, of our planned 50 years of construction that's going to take place. Uh, and I'm also excited about this idea of Imperative 13 that Nick's presenting, where students are going to have a say, where there's actually a part of Vision 2020 that doesn't specifically state, or that actually does specifically state, that students should be concerned and students should the executive team is probably the biggest and most important job of the student body president. Anybody could be elected to this position, but it's the team that he or she builds around them that's going to achieve the goals that serve the university and serve the student body. Uh, my way of, of doing so is by getting applications out everywhere and getting anybody and everybody to apply. To not just have a select and small group of students that apply to these positions, but to broadcast it, whether that's over the Unity listserv, or to organizations, or through personal phone calls, or emails, getting them out there to leaders, whether they're international students, graduate students, undergrads, um, anything, any college, any group, because there's an underrepresentation within student government currently outside of the Senate as far as everyone being represented and their opinions being heard. The executive council and the executive team needs to be able to seek out student opinion. They must be passionate about serving the students, and they must be passionate about doing it selflessly and not for their own honor. One of the most important things is, is, is surrounding yourself with people who know more than you do. Uh, I don't need to surround myself with a bunch of cadets. I understand what the Corps of Cadets is about. I understand what, it, what it's done, and I understand the policies that are within it. Um, I'm not naive enough to think that I can explain um, the future of Greek life and know the individual policies of Greek life, um, because I don't. Um, I, haven't, I haven't been a part of that. Um, I want to make sure that I surround myself with people that come straight out of those things. Um, if you are a concerned individual um, from a certain point of campus, I don't want you to have to come speak to Connor's student advocate uh, for unity or Connor's student advocate of communications. I want you to be able to speak to someone right within, uh, right within your group that is on this exec council, that is around me. Um, the past four years we've had an exec council, uh, maybe longer, uh, it's been pretty much the same with the student advocate program. It's time we take a fresh look at it. Uh, it's time that we look at the differences and changes that have come across in A&M um, over the past 10 years and see if it's time that we maybe do a different structure, uh, a, a different system and put a different structure in SGA. It doesn't have to be the exact same way every year. Um, and, and, and that's what some of the, one of the more exciting things about the student body present position um, is you can throw it all out basically and start back over um, and find a process and find a way uh, that's going to serve the student body the way it is right now. I think that's one of the best parts. At a very fast pace. Your term in office and serving on the, on the executive council is one year. And to achieve any goals in one year is a very limited amount of time. So I think that this team needs to be assembled quickly. There needs to be ideas thrown out and looked at. But in building the team, they have to understand where student government has come from and understand where to build upon it or to build into a new direction. There has to be discussions that go on with former student advocates and former vice presidents long before them. There has to be an understanding of how things have been done, how relationships with administrators have been formed, and where they can go to better serve the students. Things to realize, and in many organizations that I've talked to, I've leaned over to the president and the executive of that, uh, that organization and told them, be prepared to check your email boxes once I get elected because I'm going to immediately be sending out applications. It's not just over certain listservs through SGA or certain areas. Um, and I don't plan on selecting my EC until I'm confident that every corner of campus has gotten a chance to apply to those EC positions. It also takes me reaching out to student leaders across campus and making sure that they encourage people um, to join the EC and to apply for the EC. Um, and making sure that everybody has the opportunity, um, no matter what corner of campus and no matter who you just happen to run into on a Thursday afternoon, um, that you get the opportunity and you get that application in front of you um, before we select the EC. Because I think that's what's important to do is make sure that we bring them in from all corners of the campus.